Good morning, everyone. It's Wednesday, so it's Wednesdays with Willa. I, I'm Willa White, and I have my guest here, Bonnie White. Yeah. And we're just waiting for the Lilydale Blog Talk radio to start up, and we have a show for you. Hi, and as you come on, you can say hello to us, and good morning. <laughs> I'll be talking about some mediumship. A little soon here. I'm in Florida. Your show will go live in five seconds. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Wednesdays with Willa. I am your host, Willa White. I'm a registered medium in Lilydale, and this is Lilydale Radio. So I'm so glad you're able to tune in today. This is my radio show where I have different guests on. We talk about different spiritual topics, mediumship topics, faith and family, and it's a, a great uh, time on Wednesdays at 10 a.m. And I have today as my special guest, Bonnie White. Thanks for being on the show. <laughs> and for those of you who don't know, Bonnie White is my mother. <laughs> and I have had her on the show before. Um, and it's, it's great to um, relate with family. And we've got a lot of shared experience because we're both mediums. And uh, uh, my mother, Bonnie White, is a registered medium in Lilydale. And she is also a spirit. And so our topic today is communicating with animals in spirit. If you want to call in today, the, you're welcome to do so. Uh, the call-in number is 818-739-8818. Again, 818-739-8818. And so I want to make sure I mention there are other Lilydale radio shows that go on throughout the week. On Tuesday evenings at 8 o'clock, we have Colleen Vanderziding doing Embracing Your Essence. Wednesday mornings at 10 a.m. with me. And Wednesday evenings at 8 p.m. with John White, Journey of Light. And then uh, Thursday mornings at 10 a.m., Celeste Elliott does Wake Up to Spirit. <laughs> Wake Up Whisper. Oh, sorry about that. I can't quite remember which, which word to word use there, but... And so a lot of great shows that you can tune into. As far as tuning into Wednesdays with Willa, I have two different ways that you can listen in. I do post this Facebook Live on Willa White Medium on my Facebook page. So you can like, follow, share things that way, know when I'm going live, know when we're doing what we're doing for the topic for the radio show. And you can also look at my website, willawhite.com. Now, you can also listen, and it's an audio version only, through blogtalkradio.com slash Radio. So those are options for listening in. So as I said, uh, my guest is, is Bonnie White, my mother. <laughs> I'm very blessed, uh, very fortunate uh, to have her as my mother. She's been able to shape my journey, and we've talked about that in other shows. If you guys want to go back and look at the archive shows, uh, I think September we did we did a show and I can't remember when the, when the second one was. So this I think is our third show. I have you as my guest. It's wonderful. It is wonderful. <laughs> so uh, our topic. I know there's going to be a lot of interest in this. People are always asking about pets and as mediums, can we communicate with pets that have passed on, uh, with animals? And uh, the answer is yes. Uh, that happens, and the reason we chose this topic for today, uh, I, I'm in Florida just for a brief time working, and I, of course, get the wonderful benefit of working with my mother, too, and uh, we were 
talking about alligators. <laughs> and I, I was saying, I saw a video of a woman feeding uh, chicken breast with long silver tongs to an alligator in her kitchen. And this led to my mother telling me a story of something that happened uh, during one of her readings. So I'm going to have her share that with you today. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Will. It's just a pleasure to do this together. And it's kind of a, a dream of mine that I'd have someone <laughs> of my children <laughs> that really does this path. Yes. And um, in this particular way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everyone is on a spiritual path yes. in our family, but um, this particular path of mediumship yes. it has been a wonderful thing to have, Willa. She's my only daughter, by the way. Only daughter. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I have to share that yeah. way. So I want to talk about the alligator story. Yes, though. please do. You know, uh, Florida is actually filled with alligators. Filled. <laughs> Filled, over brimming with <laughs> alligators, and it's um, they're kind of uh, frightening. But one time, when I was doing a reading for a man, well, I should say that when I'm doing a spirit art reading, I should explain that a little bit. I use a piece of paper, and sometimes a piece, just a one piece of charcoal. Sometimes many pieces of charcoal when I draw. And I draw, start drawing with my eyes closed besides that. I also do something with many colors, and that's another level of art. But um, in, I was doing the charcoal drawing for a man. And after I started doing the charcoal drawing, I pick up about 20 little chunks of charcoal. And first of all, I pray, because yes. I always, always it's prayer. really important for the medium to be in touch with the soul energy, with the spirit energy, Sacred. and have things in alignment because um, that's what we're reaching for. That's what we're going for. We're not trying to find it in our own selves. So it's kind of a, a nice thing. It's like you get proof as you go. Yes. So what's ha what happened was I started doing that and I opened my eyes after maybe a minute of working with the charcoal and there was an alligator in the picture now i'm like coming on from the page <laughs> on the picture on the page and i'm coming from the idea of all good you know <laughs> trying to i'm really i'm like why am i getting an alligator right for her client for yes. my client and um he saw the alligator and he began to cry which was even more amazing to me but I said, well, you must have something to do with an alligator. Spirit doesn't usually just throw anything in. They, it has a meaning, even if I don't know right away what it is. And he said that he had had a pet alligator, that it was an alligator that had followed him. And it has a little, had a little peeping noise, like... So it was imprinting upon him? It was him. imprinting, and it imprinted <laughs> upon him as the mother. <laughs> oh dear. So he began to raise it. Mm -hmm. And to keep it warm, because um, it's reptilian, and they have to be kept warm, he would actually sleep with this alligator. And um, it became quite a little pet. And then it passed. So it was coming... Spirit had brought it through from Spirit to let him know that his alligator that he loved and was in grief about losing yes. was okay. A whole nother level of alligator a whole tears. Level of crocodile, <laughs> tears. <laughs> crocodile tears, alligator tears. It was amazing to me. Yeah. You have to allow whatever is going to come through I from know. Spirit about this. I mean, it's so I was, oddball, right? I was almost alligator. ready to say, oh, this is a be pet. <laughs> And it was really true. And he said, um, so I said to him before the reading was over or after the reading, I wanted to check with him because alligators are very frightening for me to see. I don't want one coming up. I know that uh, I think this area we're in now is one of the uh, capitals for alligator <laughs> bites or golf, golfing incidents or whatever. And so I, I said, does that change your attitude toward 
alligators in the wild? And he said, absolutely not. This one was bonded to me. And we had that bonding relationship. But if I saw an alligator out in the wild, I would definitely not try to feed it. I would definitely not try to befriend it because of my experience with that particular alligator. But it was interesting that it should come through in the spirit art. Yes. And he had other things come through. But that one Visual was confirmation. Visual confirmation that he was, he and I were both truly amazed. And the rational mind would want to throw that out. My rational mind was going berserk. <laughs> <laughs> and, and discard that and say, oh, I can't possibly say that. I can't possibly have that on the page. Right. But uh, yeah. things happen like it that. It was. And it was a eye-opening experience for me because I had already done a painting with a lot of alligators in it. But oh yes, that was, uh, my mother's a professional artist, <laughs> uh, beyond being a spirit artist, it's a different a lot of, level. It had things. a lot of spiritual components to it. Yes. So, um, yeah, so that was kind of, I, I loved that experience. And, I'm grateful. you know, animals will come through in readings. Mm -hmm. I remember I was doing a reading for a young lady uh, a long time ago now, but, uh, and I don't always remember readings or components of it, but you know when, you, when you're just in awe of things, you do remember it. Uh, so I was in the reading with her, and I heard this strange noise. And so I started to try to mimic it. And it, to me, it sounded almost like the sound a big cat would make. And as I made this noise, and she heard me making this noise, she burst out into tears. And uh, come to find out, she... Uh, is a zookeeper and her her specialty is with monkeys and a monkey uh, that makes this noise this sounds like a big cat to me but it's a small monkey that makes the noise that's the, that was her monkey that had passed that she was so worried about this monkey and how it was like a like a child to her and so it was a it was a big confirmation for her that everything was okay with the monkey. So if, if I had said, oh, I can't possibly pass along that noise, that clear audience that had occurred, she may not have had the, the closure that she needed about the monkey. You know, as, as zookeepers, they oh, feel yes. very deeply about what they do of, of treating animals correctly and, and you know, nurturing them and cherishing mm -hmm. them. So. Uh, when we talk about communication with animals, we don't just mean domesticated animals because other things will come in. Snakes will come in, <laughs> birds That's will true. come in, That's and so uh, a lot of times if um, connecting with someone's pet that has passed, a dog or a cat, that sort of thing, um, they they feel that so deeply. Uh, I've had instances where you know, we, we've connected with their mother, their father, their husband, everything, and they, we finally get to their cat, and that's when they burst out into tears because so that, um, that unconditional love that they experienced with that animal mm -hmm. meant the world to them, and that's, they're living from that heart space with them. And I frequently tell people, if we were to extrapolate on the unconditional love that we experience with animals and convey that into our relationship with people, what an amazing world this would be. That's true. And you know, I've found that sometimes uh, a dog, especially dogs, will come through first and the person will know whose dog it is. Yes. They'll recognize That's it. That's my dad's dog. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing that comes through is the face of the father. Mm -hmm. So it's like there's something about the animals that really does have a spiritual connection with us. Mm -hmm. and, and their guardianship. Yes. Uh, dogs are good. They're good for guarding, guarding your emotional body. Yes, not just um, not just sitting and communicating, but actually, they pick up the emotions that you're having, and they really help 
No. They transmute things. Yes, they do. No, not every dog or cat is a healer. It's all of them or not. But many of them are, and they'll pick a location on your body, and that's where they hone in on doing the healing. That's right. Because they know that's where you, you need it most. That's right. Now, the one of the first times that I used spirit art and mediumship, when the, um, when the animal came through, was w one time... When I was doing a reading, it wasn't in Lilydale, it was outside of Lilydale, but um, I was doing a reading for a lady, and I do my usual thing of closing my eyes and seeing what comes through, and there was a man, and she recognized the man by his hair, because it was her father, and they used to, and I can't, I was trying to remember this morning, what she called that, it was a two, great big toupee, it was like a it was like a big one. Like a pompadour? Pompadour, that's what the word oh. was. Okay, I could not remember. Okay, and she said, oh, it's my dad that says pompadour. <laughs> Thank you. And um, so we were delighted that it came through with the pompadour. And then I looked twice, and the pompadour had the body of a, an Airedale dog in it. <laughs> So I'm thinking, I don't know if I should it, say that. <laughs> isn't the Airedale is more of a thin dog with long coat? Is that yeah, but it was it? something about it, and, and it looked like an Airedale. They have, um, I think they have whiskery looking mm -hmm. areas, you know, uh, they're fuzzy-ish, but maybe it's a coarser hair, I don't know. But it wasn't like his, it was on the pompadour, mm -hmm. and pompadour was big enough that you could actually see that it was the dog. Yes. And she said, that is my dad's dog, and it died six within six months of his death. Oh. And it wasn't because it was old. And it showed up on his head. And it showed <laughs> up <laughs> in his hair. <laughs> so, you know, they show up, it showed up like that, and I'm thinking, dog on the wow, brain. Wow, <laughs> animal spirit. And some, I don't know, you know, you've, when you're first beginning things like that, you don't know how people are going to accept it, whether animals have spirits, whether they right. have souls, or where do they go and all that and here was this animal and they had it was it was the proof yeah. beyond the pompadour right right proof beyond the pompadour so it, it was it's a wonderful it's a wonderful service that animals do and they don't have to be just registered service dogs right to provide the wonderful space for us to, to exist and so, for me, as far as communicating with animals, uh, if I see them visually, they tend to come in at animal level. So humans up here for me, and then animals down closer to the floor, and that helps me to distinguish what the size of the animal is. Sometimes I'll be able to see the coloration or the pattern that might be on the animal. Uh, sometimes I'll hear it, I'll know what kind of bark or meow it has, and the personality, and um, sometimes I'll, I'll get the physical symptoms, just like we would for a human. Mm -hmm. I'll get physical things uh, that have to do with cancer, or if there was a big tumor hanging off of things. or it, it, yeah. it, I can't determine in advance how descriptive it might be when I communicate with an animal. Um, it just it just like I can't do that with humans. So it's something that I've noticed that they can come in in all those different ways. And, and yes. the love never dies with animals. That's, That's true. I, I remember doing a reading for a lady once, and she says, she said to me, are you serious? That dog died 40 years ago. <laughs> she couldn't believe that the dog was they still They stay with you, folks. They stay with They you. do visit. <laughs> they do like to visit. And, you know, clients have reported that they see their animals yes. around with them. And They'll, feel them sometimes. Right. They'll jump up on the bed next to them when they're sleeping. Mm -hmm. So it's it's fun. It's, yeah, animals it's are a lot a of lot fun of to bring fun. through. Oh, let me think of another story here. <laughs> um... I don't tend to remember the readings, but I know. You just um, let it go. Usually. The uh, animal ones sometimes yeah. are so vivid and interesting. Should I tell about the one where the lady came uh, who was looking for her boy? Sure, you can tell her that. Tell them that. <clears throat> okay, there was a lady who came, and when she first came in, she was really, um, truly in grief and very, very, very sad. And she couldn't help but tell me that it was her boy's birthday. 
and that's why she was, her boy had passed, and, and she was hoping that her boy would come through. And usually, I don't like to know ahead of time. I right. like to have like to know spirit ahead, yes. decide who comes through the person. I said, so I don't know if we're going to get your boy or not, but um, we'll, we'll give it a try. So the first thing, I did my drawing with my eyes closed. And I do this on 11 by 14 piece of paper, 11 inches by 14 inches. And um, right in the very middle was a picture of a moose. So I'm like, oh, I was hoping that would be her boy. And she looked at it, and I said, it's a moose. Do you have any connection with a moose? And she said, no, no. And I'm like, oh, no. I, I said, well, I'll try it. And so I tried in a new space where it was blank on the page, and a little dog came through. And I said, oh, no, it's a dog. I'm looking for her boy. And she said, no, that's not my boy. And I said, okay, there's another, there were like three in a row. So we explored the different ones. None of them were boy. I said, well, if I, I'll try one more time. And if your boy doesn't come through, um, I'll have to send you to somebody else. I mean, you can't guarantee you're going to connect with anything. I can't guarantee I'm going to connect here. <laughs> you can't. And um, she said, please, please, please try. I know you can do it. She knew I could do it after <laughs> most of the dogs, right? So I did one more time, and it was another dog. I said, I'm sorry. She said, no, that's my boy. <laughs> I'm like, you mean you're looking for a dog? I didn't know. Right. I didn't know who she was. Right. So then she told me who the other dogs were. <laughs> she she told me this dog was my friend when I was a little girl, my first friend, and she's with me all the time. This one uh, was another dog I had. This one. And so she, she acted like she didn't know anything. No, she want, only wanted the one. She only wanted the one because that's true. So she told you she didn't understand the other stuff. No, she didn't. Oh. She didn't recognize it wasn't her boy. And I thought I was going. I didn't right. assume that the boy, that the dogs were correct. You know, right. I assumed I was really going off the beam. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> we have to you know, check ourselves as mediums. You know. Right. So, right. Anyway, so then we we had a lot of discussion and everything. And I said, well, if all of this is other true, I said, I don't understand why uh, spirit would put the moose in there. Right. I came right back to the moose, yeah. and I said, this has to have meaning. Yeah. If it's all so accurate, right. what's the moose? And she said, we always took our boy on a vacation every year, and we went, there was a special place in Maine we would go, and the last time... We took him on vacation before he died. A moose stepped out in front of us and it was looking right into our vehicle. I think she said truck, but I can't remember. Mm -hmm. and, and it was huge. And my boy went crazy. He just went crazy. And it took him forever to settle down. <laughs> he was so excited. And he just barked and barked and barked. It was the most exciting thing. And the moose wasn't moving. So there's a the message moose. from the dog about a moose. <laughs> and the first thing that came through was this giant moose in the page. And it's like, how does spirit do this? How right. on earth? You can't make them do it. They how just on earth do they do this? You know, I don't know how they do it. And I'm doing it every day. <laughs> the vibration of love. It, and, and they put the moose in. So it's, uh, that was such a successful reading. Yeah. And it looked like such a unsuccessful one right. for the, most of the part of it. <laughs> so, <laughs> and it's I, and she was so happy then. Sure. Of so course. the tears turned to tears of joy and happiness. But yes. it's, it's uh, stay with it, folks. Stay with it. <laughs> stay with it to the end. <laughs> and, and sometimes pets will talk about humans that are around them. Too. That's true too. Just like like a, like a human spirit would talk about things. Sometimes animals will talk, but it, it's more symbolically and annoying than I feel when they're talking to me that way. Yes. I don't feel like I can actually understand dog barks or 
cat meows. <laughs> I'm not to that level. No, but, but see. there is another level of uh, animal communication. That's the like the uh, Ted Andrews books. Yeah, you know, Ted like, Andrews. If you're looking for understanding about animal right, communication, he's. Excellent. I like those books because they use the am animals for symbols, and you can look it up and see what, say, for instance, a bear means, or. Right. You can look it up and see what an alligator. I can't remember what it means, but it could be transformation. Could be anything. Right. It's not going to be what we normally think of as a certain animal. It right. Could be. It's a, usually a spiritual connection, and one of the things that comes through for me as a very strong spiritual connection is when a bear comes through mm -hmm. in my pictures. It doesn't mean that you had an incident with a bear. It doesn't mean it might, but I have to weed through that. It usually means that the person has either had uh, recent spiritual healing, body healing, actual physical healing, mm -hmm. or is what I would call a healer, right? And has the ability to uh, bring um, the healing feeling and the love and the feelings of comfort that come to a person who is sick or has some sort of pain, and they. They're the kind of person sometimes that really knows what another person needs. And it's strange to think that that would be the bear symbol, but that's what Spirit has arranged with me for a symbol. And kind a shorthand for things. A shorthand, and then I know this, yeah. is, this is about spiritual healing. Mm -hmm. It could even be physical healing. Right. And, um, and one time I had a bear come through, and it was chasing what I thought was the person, and I said, I have asked Spirit never to give me bad things. Mm -hmm. like, I'm sorry, <laughs> but I can't deal with it. And so here's this bear with the this claws going after this person, and, and um, I said, it always means healing, but I don't understand why it's coming through like that. And she said, I know what that is. She had to deal with a person whose personality was like an angry bear and mm. she has overcome it in her life and she had overcome it recently and also received a spiritual uh, physical healing oh, after it. Because so it emotional. was connected very strongly with the spiritual experience mm -hmm. and you know I'm not always I'm not, it's, I'm not always quick enough to um, make that shift sure <laughs> from the scary to the great <laughs> so, I'm there with you on that one uh, <laughs> and so but it's wonderful to know that spirit is working with you on all levels. And if you think you're alone, you're not. Right. I know that you're looking for maybe one person when you come in for a reading, but there are probably six that are trying to get through right. and say hello to you. And so just remember that. You're you not alone. Just because you've lost someone very, very dear to you doesn't mean that you're alone. They're there, but they might not be able to come through without making you really, really sad. Yeah. Until there's been a while. So sometimes they send people someone need else. space about yeah. those things. They, they, because they don't want to make you, of it. They don't want to. And when you feel their presence, sometimes it's so sad. They don't. They don't want to come as close. Well, it's hard for them to get through someone who's in an upset aura space. Yeah, but other people hard can to get come through in. That. Other people can come yeah. in, but so, some other people that yeah, so they. Really a variety of, of, ex of experiences. Oh, I have another one that just popped okay. into my mind with an animal. Okay. Okay. And then we should I probably take a call. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, might, I, have, I don't know what the timing is. Okay. Okay. <laughs> go ahead and tell it. Go, you go sure? Tell it. Yeah. Okay. There was a, a woman who came to me and... Oh, 17 minutes. Oh. <clears throat> anyway, <Very> quick. <laughs> us, her, some people in her family, like you say, some people in the family come through... But, um, and she was really happy. She's a sweet lady. And then all of a sudden, this dog came through with puppies, plus puppies. Mm -hmm. And she burst into tears. And it, she recognized the dog. She said, that's this, I don't want to say spitting image, but the, that's, that is my dog. Right. And she was so, I said, well, how is she? She says, well, how is she? Is she okay? And I said, yeah, look at her. Yeah. She's bouncing. She's happy. I, she was kind of in the act of, almost looked like her fur was 
in the act of bouncing, being joyous, being joyous, and I said, she's so happy and she's so grateful to you and she loves you so much. She loves me. She says, this is the lady who loves her dog. She right, doesn't right. know that the dog <laughs> loves her because she had put it to sleep the day before. Right. The day before. The day before. Can you believe it came through the next day? It can happen that and, way. And uh, she, she said, I said, your dog, she said, it was so, I can't remember what was wrong with the dog, but it had to be put down. There was no way it could ever live. Right. Plus the puppies. Plus the puppies. And the puppies were with her too. So it's like there is so much going on with animals and spirit yes. brings it through. They, they do constantly, constantly mm -hmm. bring good things through that are reaffirming for people. And, so, and they'll do that. All that well. guilt she felt. Yes. All that terrible <laughs> sadness and guilt and feeling like she had... And she was able best. to let go of oh. that. That's yeah. that's part of what, what can happen in a reading with people. Yeah. They can let go of, of guilt and, and ease about those things. Because people agree. come through and apologize. They come through and say they're fine. Yeah. They don't hold the grudges. Whatever. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a big reason of why why we do this. Well, let's take a, a caller. And you, did you want to do one of those? Yeah, so let's see. Yeah. I'm going yeah. to but, uh, take caller uh, num ending in 7156. So 7156. Hello and welcome to the show. Hi, lady. Hi. <laughs> Oh, I'm good. Know, I'm white, so I feel really oh, cool. <laughs> Very cool. And 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 so, uh, what's your first name, and where are you calling from? Yeah, I'm calling from uh, Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. And my question is this: uh, you know, either be a pet or be a human. Uh, you know, I had a trip to me last week where 20, almost, almost 24 hours prior to an interview, I was. is uh, you were getting ready for an interview and you started communicating with spirit like the day before and it ended up being the person who was interviewing you it ended up being her mom is what you said right yeah uh, and you're wondering how is that possible that I get advanced contact with spirit uh, there are mediums that work that way I have in the past worked that way but I, I uh, uh, early on in things decided to preset uh -oh, circumstances that I would receive information. So it's very common for people who are starting out in mediumship to get information in advance of something they're doing in their life. Uh, sometimes they will even receive information through dreams in, in advance of uh, going through an event or meeting with a particular person. This is another level of synchronicity. <laughs> so there is the law of synchronicity and the law of attraction. There are spiritual natural laws that are at work in our lives and this is just an extension of that. And spirit communication is constantly working for this. I've had people contact me because they had a dream and they were visited by their loved one in spirit. The loved one in spirit gave them my name, Willa, and that I was a medium and they were supposed to contact me. And they look me up online and, and they verify that there is a medium named Willa. <laughs> so I have people to that level, to that degree, and that just happened a few months ago. 
<laughs> so, um, th but that's very normal. It's very natural, and it's through that law of attraction, the law of synchronicity, and the and the love. Uh, loved ones in spirit, you have to remember, also enjoy connecting with us, and they they like to have that love and communication continued on. So I think it's wonderful that you received that to some extent, as long as the person that you end up communicating that their spirit loved one is with you is on the same page and of acceptance. <laughs> That's sometimes the tricky part. <laughs> but I, I think that was a confirmation for you. Yes, definitely. Yes? Oh, that's perfect. Good, good. I think that... What should I do next in the study? Well, I, it's excellent if you can find a mediumship development circle that's in your area. I always am trying to encourage people that if you can go to a mediumship development circle where there's a teacher and there are other people that would be part of your peer group, you can give and receive messages and really start to mind, body, spirit align for that purpose at least once a week. And uh, certainly books do help, but it's more about hands-on practice. So workshops are great. If you come to Lilydale, we've got a great summer lineup that you can already check out the workshops online with lilydaleassembly.com. We've got a, a lot of great things that, that you can take part in here in Lilydale. Uh, but it's about doing it. It's about, I do play in this summer, yes, Oh, good. Oh, good. <laughs> so, you know, being around people of like mind and talking about like, how do you receive information and how do I, you know, like just play, being playful and mm -hmm. sacred because what we're doing as mediums is sacred and it can be fun as well. I'm always advocate of that. <laughs> so uh, continue on with this. If, if it feels good and you feel uh, the confirmation, I mean, when you know that you're doing good, it, there's no doubt that you should keep heading in that direction. <clears throat> well, I'm excited for you. I am too. <laughs> well, that's exciting. It is exciting. And, you know, a lot of people uh, send ahead in a way. In other words... Um, you may be also sending your thoughts ahead mm -hmm. um, of you it, with, with love and caring about yes. the people you run into. And then those people, it's, it's funny, it, it, right, it's synchronicity, it's synchronicity. and it's that um, law, of attraction. law of attraction. And uh, uh, people will ask, how should I prepare for a reading? And I do have suggestions for receiving a reading on my website on the reading FAQ page. But a lot of times I just say to them, tell your people in spirit, hey, you guys, I've got an appointment, show up. Right. And that seems to work really well. So it's just about showing up. <laughs> well, I thank you so much. Yes. <laughs> uh, I thank you so much for calling in today, and I wish you all the best in your mediumship. You be well. Thank you, Thank you. Wonderful. Bye. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's wonderful what can happen with spirit mm -hmm. and how people will get things in advance. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's a confirmation that they're heading in the right direction mm -hmm. in their life. And, so. and, and spirit's way of saying, wake up, we're here, yes. investigate, yes. look into it, keep your, keep your whole body involved. Mm -hmm. Very keep much your so. Other other bodies, your emotional body and your spiritual body and your consciousness lined up for this. Absolutely. Because they're there and they're ready to well work with people. They are. Yeah. They are. Well, I want to, uh, I mean, know we've got a, another caller, so I want to give them a chance if they have a question for us today. So, caller ending in 8138. Again, 8138. Hello and welcome to the show. Good morning, Willa. How are you? Doing well. <laughs> What's your name and where are you calling from? Hi, this is Julie and I'm calling from upstate New York. Okay, wonderful. Thanks for calling in today. And did you have a comment or question? Yes, I just wondered if you happen to see an animal near me in spirit. I just lost dogs. 
Oh, don't tell us. Don't tell us. <laughs> don't tell us anything. <laughs> um, but I, I think my mom's willing to do a spirit art for you. Um, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I don't know if an animal will come through, but we're, we're going to give it a, sh a shot right here on the show. Does that sound good? Oh, thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome, Julie. I've got about three or four pieces that I'm going to move around. She's, she's working Hoping the charcoal on the page right now. Well, Her eyes are closed. <laughs> and we'll share this picture with you later and with everyone. I'll take a picture of it and post it on my Facebook page. So you'll be able to retrieve okay. it that way and comment. I'm turning it around. And a lot of times what she'll do is she'll turn it around to see if she sees things at different angles. So you may want to try to do that uh, when you when you are able to get the visual yourself later on. Oop. I don't think I'm done here. Just a minute. Oh, she's still just trying to do things. <laughs> I don't have a little table. Okay. All right, now I'm... We're in better. Florida, so we don't okay. have the setup I usually do. Okay. Now, let me get some of this off so I can check it out. Okay, okay so we're looking at the picture. Wow. <laughs> I want to know if you have recently done some really changing around in your life, like moving around and, and organizing and that kind of thing, because I'm seeing a lot of that here. Yes. Yes. And um, now... I'm also seeing up here, I saw this right away, and it's like a, it looks like a dog that's wrapped up. Um, yes. Like ra wrapped, like, um, almost like a blanket is all around. It, it does look like that. <laughs> it's like a little nose sticking out, and the, and it's, uh, there's a certain... Dog in a blanket. A dog, <laughs> dog in a blanket. And it's, um, it's very... There's something about the dog that seems extremely sincere, you know, like a really a focused type dog. Yes. See how it's looking here, and this little ear here. So, um, was it a dog? Yes, it was a dog. Yes. Okay. And then, do you understand why it would be, come in looking wrapped up, <laughs> like like it's all swaddled, yes. like swaddled? He, he, he yes, he was swaddled. In blanket and I haven't let go of the blanket for a week. Wow. Wow. Great confirmation. Thank wow. you. Because it's right there. That's the first thing I saw, but it, it was just the dog head and then this blanket round her. I didn't see the rest of the dog. You know yeah. What I mean? You can't see the But I did the see that there was a lot going on and that um, there was a lot of love with the dog. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like a lot. Now I'm seeing a couple of people here. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. I yeah. see right the in the center. In the center, there are two people that are really um, very loving. So there's some, there must be someone with you that is very com comforting you at this time. Yes, my husband uh, held the dog for over two hours while he was passing so he's, in the blanket. So he's sharing the grief. It's not just your grief, but his grief too. Yes. And it's like they're you really are close. Yeah, right it's in like the a middle. cute little couple in the it's middle. It's like of a it. couple in the middle, <laughs> and they're really close. And um, and there's his the, the husband's his head. head. I can see. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a line going from the two right over to the blanketed dog. Yes, you're right. Reaching so out to that. There's a lot in here. There's probably money more things in here if you Both use a magnifying glass. Yeah, we don't have much time. Really. Okay. okay. So, yeah. So well, well, we'll share this later online, like I said, so you'll be able to see it more. And you may want, want to zoom in so you mm -hmm. can see it. And also rotate the picture, and you'll probably see other faces in this. Right. But uh, I hope that it helps to give you the confirmation you needed, Julie. You're wow. welcome. It's very, it's a very wonderful, the dog felt so protected during his passing. So very protected, yeah. I have to say that. And that was a wonderful yeah. gift for yeah. the dog. Okay. Very Thank sweet. you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you both. Oh, you are very welcome. Thank you so much for calling in and, and lots of love to you. Oh, well, we'll share that later. 90 seconds. 90 seconds, folks. Okay, so we'll, we'll, 
I'll take a picture uh, and share it like I promised. Um, and the show's gone by so fast. And so yes. as you can see, we've given some examples of, of ways the animals uh, come in. There are many other ways. I distinctly remember uh, I was doing a reading for um, a mother and her son together, a family session, and uh, her other son in spirit came through and he brought in a bird and it perched on the chair in spirit. And she said, yes, that actually happened after my son's passing. Uh, a bird came through the sliding glass doors and landed on um, the dining room chair. And so she had her confirmation and it was lovely that it came through in the reading. So sometimes animals will be messengers for human spirits as well. And it's a, a wonderful confirmation. So I hope you've enjoyed our show today of communicating with, with animals in spirit. And there's so many more things we could share about it, but time goes by so fast. Next week, I will be uh, in Lilydale. I have as my guest Patricia Price, and we're going to be talking about right, left brain, and how that applies to intuition and mediumship, so you can uh, know a little bit more of how to use that. Uh, so tune in next week, same channel, same time. And we really appreciate everybody calling in today and joining us for Wednesdays with Willa. And thanks for being on the show today, Mom. Thank you for having me. I loved it. Thank you all. See. All right, everyone. Have a great day. Lots of love to all of you, and we'll send some sh sunshine your way.